Do you have a hard time staying hard during sex? Hey guys, I'm Stephanie Ganowski, sexologist and sex coach for men. Welcome to my channel if you are new and if you've been subscribed, welcome back. Now, if you're someone who struggles with erectile dysfunction, you probably know that there are many causes and they range from heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, right? Then you have more of the psychological side, which is anxiety, tension in the relationship, overthinking, also some lifestyle habits like drinking way too much, not sleeping enough. I want to give you three tips to help with your erectile dysfunction experiences. If you are the type of guy that feels like it happens mainly due to your overthinking or lack of presence during sex. So the first tip I want to give you is know your turn-ons. If you've been watching my content, you know that I'm very clear about the importance of you men to know what gets you aroused at this stage in life sexually, what sexually fulfills you, what excites you. If you were to come up with your own fantasy in your head, what would it be about, right? No easy way out, not watching porn. If you had to think through to get you to a high level of arousal, what would you think about? If you had a woman in front of you who was like, do to me whatever you want that would make you feel good, what would you do to her? Do you know? If she was to ask you how to give you the best blow job, would you know how to give her specific direction? Do you know what makes you feel most connected to your partner during sex? Do you know what makes you feel most attractive during sex? Do you know what your greatest sex skills are? And how often are you using them? These questions go into knowing your turn-ons, knowing what makes you feel really good. Because often a lot of guys, they go into sex with the focus of, I have to perform for her, I just have to be rock hard, and I have to penetrate her to have multiple orgasms. And that's like the number one goal that men have going into sex, and they forget that this is a time they're supposed to be feeling good with their partner. When you feel good with your partner, you both end up feeling great because then your partner doesn't feel like this weird, you know, performance that you're trying to put on for her. You're both more present and you're having more fun. You're more connected. You're more in the moment. So it's more fun. And being able to stay connected and relaxed and have more fun does come from understanding yourself and knowing what turns you on so that you can be there to communicate with your partner and participate in the act of feeling good instead of making it all about her and putting pressure on yourself. All right, so that's definitely one way to ease a lot of physical tension because when you know more about yourself, you feel more confident in yourself. And when you can communicate what you know, you feel even more confident. And when you have a partner who accepts what you communicate, you feel even better, right? So this is why communication with your partner is so important. It's good to know about yourself. It's good to talk about it and find someone who is not gonna judge you, but actually, make you feel like you deserve to have as much pleasure as they do and you're sharing in that. That's when sex becomes really fun and you actually get to go into different territories and explore a bit because that trust is built and that understanding and self-awareness is there. And when all of that is there, your body works better pleasure-wise. Your erections are harder. You feel more in control. So tip number one, know your hard-ons. Know your turn-ons. Tip number two is understand how to reduce your anxiety and build your sexual confidence. And I like to put these hand in hand because you kind of don't want to focus too much on your anxiety. You want to in fact replace it with confident habits, confident behaviors. But when you have an anxious thought come up in your head, you want to know how your body adjusts back to normalcy. What do you need to tell yourself? What action do you need to take? Who do you need to talk to? Do you need to meditate and think about something? Or do you need to meditate and just blank out completely? Do you need to make a list of all the things in your life that you're grateful for? Do you need to reflect or make a list on what things are going good for you sexually and all your great sex experiences? And I understand that you can't do this in the act, right? But these are things to get you more calm when it comes to the act. Knowing that your anxiety is not the end of the world and you can handle it and you know how to calm yourself down. You trust you can calm yourself down because you've done it. You've done it and you continue to do it, right? So when you're in a moment of actually having sex and you notice yourself getting all anxious and worked up and you notice a tension and a pressure in your pelvic floor and a pressure maybe mentally or your heart is pounding or you have digestion problems and you know that deep breathing helps you regulate your nervous system and calm down, then you could do those deep breaths during sex. Or you could take a moment to just say, hey, let's just make out for a bit. I just wanna touch you. Let's just cuddle for a bit. I just wanna feel you up and cuddle you. There are things you can say, there are things you could do to even give yourself a physical break if you wanna kind of get out of that, that sexual act. And that's okay, like this, this happens, it's okay. 
And having these past sex experiences that make you feel good about yourself and confident about yourself sexually are also good to just keep in your head whenever you need to think about that memory to pull you out of an anxious spot. David Goggins calls it his mental cookie jar. He says that whenever he needs a push in life, he has a mental cookie jar that he goes into, pulls out a memory of a time when he felt really good, really strong, and he uses that memory to reflect on very quickly, actually feels the emotions that are attached to that memory, which then enhances his confidence in that moment. You can handle whatever happens. Most likely you've had good sex experiences, even if you don't have much sex experience. Like, have you had good experiences with women in the past? Have you had enjoyable sex experiences with yourself? You know, do whatever it takes for you to reflect on the things that make you feel like, I got this. You know, I don't have to stress. I don't have to make this more complicated than it is. Find what works for you. Figure out if it's a quick flip of a thought if you have to do some self-talk in a specific way, if you have to take a break and go to the bathroom and take some really deep breaths and maybe do a, a breath exercise, if you wanna just lay down and cuddle with her for a moment, if you wanna switch to making out, if you wanna just slow down the sex completely, that will also slow down your anxiety most likely. If you wanna go to eating her out because maybe you're, maybe you're getting panicked over losing your erection, but you know you're skilled at eating her out, so you just go down and you, you go there where you feel confident. Understand yourself, how to reduce your anxiety and how to build your confidence specifically is what's going to help you stay harder during sex. When you know you can handle something, you're not so much afraid of it happening because you know, hey, if that happens, I do this, right? What gets a lot of guys stuck in this anxious cycle of behavior, especially when it comes to erectile dysfunction, is they don't know what they do if they lost it. They just have this like image in their head of them just panicking with their erection gone and her laughing or making fun of them or getting weirded out or like getting disappointed. So they don't have an image in their head when they think about that scary thought. They don't have a way of how they're gonna handle it. And that's what creates more anxiety. So if you can create an action plan for yourself on if this happens, here's what I'll do, then a lot of that anxiety will go away and a lot of those erectile dysfunction experiences therefore will go away. Number three is know your preferred foreplay. So as a guy, you've probably been told that you shouldn't need foreplay and that's for women, but that's not true. I know that my partner now doesn't naturally go towards foreplay for himself, but I know if I put him there, he enjoys it. I know that if you guys had the type of foreplay that you really enjoyed, you would love foreplay. You would really enjoy it, you would crave it. And I think that our society is just really ingrained in men and women that men shouldn't need foreplay and therefore it's, it's just for women. And that creates a sense of anxiety because think about it, there are certain types of foreplay you can do to get much harder than you would just going straight to penetration. And the thing is guys who feel anxious around erectile dysfunction and afraid that that might happen, they might get soft. You know, if you have this thought, oh my God, what if I get soft before we have sex? And then you go right into sex, you're gonna start panicking because that thought is on the top of your mind and chances are you will lose your erection if you're panicking about that. Not even panicking if you're just feeling really uneasy about it and it's a main focus point in your head. So to not make that a main focus point, do something else that doesn't require your dick to be hard. Maybe have her tease you with a toy or with a dance. Maybe have her massage certain areas of your body. Maybe ask if she could give you a blowjob and then do some outer course in between where she's just rubbing over you and it's kind of like this tease. Maybe it's you doing some anal play on her and that's really enjoyable and you're not at the point of penetration yet, but you're doing, you're partaking in something that's fun that's enjoyable and that gets you out of the mindset that I need to be hard and I need to be hard now. What is your type of foreplay? What's gonna help you feel good so you can ease into the active penetration instead of feeling anxious at the very start of it? I hope these three tips helped. And if you're looking for more, then you'll definitely like this video. Check it out.